moment to have such a renowned faculty for this IJS Prime Time. IJS Prime Time has been showcasing the best of the talents from this country and outside of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be your host for this evening. And I take privilege in inviting Professor Sunil Puppet, sir, our president of the Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy Surgeons. Professor Sunil Puppet has taken over IAGS at the most difficult part of leadership in the presence of Corona and in the presence of multiple waves lashing us the scientific fraternity and the medical fraternity. He has been brilliant in crafting all the academics in a perfectly and distinct manner. And he has taken the tough time and he has contributed for the welfare of the doctors as well as for the patients by handling the COVID relief program, which has been successfully happening over the few years. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are first time knowing about Dr. Sunil Papad, he has been a chairman of Nidhi Hospital and he has very special interest on forget laparoscopic surgery and has been an advanced laparoscopic surgery as well. He is also an ardent endoscopist and endotherapist, and he has been in forget surgery as his principal core and concern. So, may I have the honor of inviting Professor Sunil Papad to give his welcome address. Over to you, President. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kanagwell, for the kind words. Good evening, friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited to invite you once again for today's session of IGS Prime Time. In a short while of one year, IGS Prime Time has become one of the most popular online laparoscopic surgical program, not only in India, but also abroad. I'm very happy to welcome our past president and trustee of IGS, uh, Dr. Sandev Dasgupta, today as a chairperson. Uh, distinguished uh, faculty all across India and abroad, Professor C. Palani Velu, who is a laparoscopic surgeon beyond excellence from Coimbatore. Dr. Rajesh Bojwani, our second chairperson, and uh, he is from Jaipur. He is an advanced laparoscopic surgeon. And Dr. Senthil Nathan, who is an advanced laparoscopic and HPB surgeon from GM Hospital Chennai. IAGS Prime Time was started last year by IAGS because of the COVID pandemic. We started online activities. And in last one year, we had more than 25 episodes with different faculties from India and abroad. Today, we are having the pleasure of welcoming Professor Palanivelu, who is not only famous in India, but all across the world. And last 20 years, I am seeing Dr. Palanivelu and he still looks the same. There's the secret of uh, doing so many surgeries, he always keeps young. Dr. Senthil Nathan is also a leading laparoscopic surgeon from Chennai Jam Hospital and has contributed a lot to the teaching and progress of laparoscopic surgery in India and abroad. I'm very happy to say that my dear friend, Dr. Rajesh Bojwani, is taking over today as president of CELSI, the third laparoscopic surgery association of India. And uh, IAGS is blessed to have Founder President of Amasi on board today and presi current President of CELC and IAGS and past President of uh, uh, IAGS. So it's a gallery of uh, uh, faculties and I am sure this cohesiveness of surgeons across the board helps our colleagues, our junior colleagues to enhance their knowledge and skills in the field of laparoscopic surgery. Two, three months ago, we did a program on management of carcinoma of pancreas. At that time, our focus was on the cancer. 
Today we have invited Dr. Today, Pulani Velu to, to talk. Kanakwal, uh, can you please switch off this, your uh, audio? Can you switch off this, your uh, audio? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So Dr. Pulani Velu was among the first to do laparoscopic pancreatic duodenectomy, and I I know that he has demonstrated it in Western countries also. He has so many first to his credit and I am sure Rajesh will introduce him in detail. But many of us have learned so many procedures while watching Dr. Palaniwalu do the things. Once, once again, he is going to talk today on laparoscopic pancreatic resections. Our second speaker, Dr. Santhil Nathan, is going to in the second part of today's program. Without uh, spending much time, I'll invite my dear colleague, Dr. Rajesh Pujwani, to introduce formally Professor Palani Velu formally and, Professor and take on the first, pro first lecture. And Thank take you. Take on the first, pro first lecture. Thank you. Thank you, President. Uh, it is my responsibility and honor to welcome our distinguished colleague for the evening, for chairing the first talk. Dr. Rajesh Bojwani is the first qualified AMCH surgical gastroenterology super specialist in the state of Rajasthan. He has been passed out with outstanding records from Gwalior, later Gangaram Hospital, and then GP Pant Hospital. Setting up the first surgical gastroenterology department in the whole state of Rajasthan, and he is instrumental in creating, and he currently is the head as a director of the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology and has been training for sleep super specialty postgraduates for the last two decades at the Sangtoba Institute of Digestive Surgery. May I have the honor of welcoming Dr. Rajesh Bojwani to moderate the first session. And over to you, Dr. Rajesh. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kanagwil, and thank you, Dr. Popat, for inviting me over. Uh, very good evening, uh, all the viewers and listeners uh, to the prime time. It's indeed my privilege uh, to get this uh, opportunity to introduce uh, the biggest phase of laparoscopic surgery from India. I remember when I was a student, when I was doing my MCH, uh, he was the inspiration for me. And it is such an amazing uh, fact to witness such an energetic person who has been inspiring three generations of surgeons, not only in this country, but all across the world. And he continues to do so. Uh, I'm sure this uh, two, three minutes that I have to introduce to him, to introduce uh, Dr. Palani Velu are, uh, are no, no way going to suffice his introduction. But let me bring up the salient uh, designations that he has. He is the chairman of Gem Hospital and Research Center, Coimbatore, and also the professor and director of Institute of Gastroenterology and Minimal Access Surgery there. He is also the managing trustee of Gem Digestive Diseases Foundation, uh, which is a charitable trust. Uh, all of us have seen him operating, demonstrating hundreds and thousands of times. The entire world has witnessed that. It is important uh, for all of us to realize that he comes from a very humble background and I'm sure that inspires so many surgeons uh, today as to how one can stay committed to and focused on his profession and reach the heights from nowhere. Uh, he is the face behind the laparoscopic revolution and he is held in very high esteem by all of his peers from across the world. He has been a Dr. B. C. Roy National Awardee in 2006 and 2015. He was awarded by the House of Commons, a UK Parliament, in 2018. He was the first Indian to win a silver medal in the International Olympic Minimal Access Surgery Competition in 2009 in Phoenix, USA. He has more than 20 new operative techniques to his name, and all of these techniques are followed almost all across the world by various surgical societies. He has authored many books in surgery, and I'm sure each one of us, one of us has gone through 
at least one of his books at some point of time in our career uh, trying to shape and understand surgery and particularly laparoscopic surgery and he was the first indian surgeon who was accorded the privilege to operate and teach in various countries including the united kingdom usa hong kong hong kong argentina etc apart from these he has a very strong uh, inclination towards social and community services and he has not only started a charitable trust he has a very strong uh, intention towards helping the poor and he runs not only free beds free mobile clinics free ambulances uh, which help the downtrodden and the underprivileged society of patients in this country and i think that uh, that, that is something which is very very peculiar and very deserves uh, a very good respect from all the peers also so uh, and there apart from that he has number of achievements and awards i think it will take a long time if i go through all of these awards it's a long long list and uh, without wasting much time may i have this honor and privilege to invite sir dr palani velu to come up with his uh, oration on the laparoscopic pancreatic surgery good evening sir please come yeah, good evening thank you raji Uh, nice introduction, and I thank uh, uh, Dr. Anil Vail and President of IAGS Sunil Popat, and uh, to make me to speak on today's uh, prime time. And uh, I think I'm very happy to be part of this IAGS or Ramasi or Selsi and India. We are Indian surgeons wherever opportunity comes. You know, sharing our knowledge, promoting that is our you know, happiness. and uh, uh, viewers are there probably maybe students or maybe practicing surgeons and today the title that uh, i don't know sunil popper i don't know why how you chosen this and uh, the title is a pancreatic resection is it conquered that means still there is there a doubt or uh, is there uh, it has been proved yeah uh, i think it is okay let me see somewhere you know anything if a new science comes all of a sudden will not take up completely but slowly in phase of time it will take over and now um i think today and uh, 24 years uh, first people that 20 is and 3 years completed so first people after the 23 years now journey is very big now so that way very happy that uh, where we stand today truly that minimally invasive pancreatic resection is going to be or already we reach or is going to be i will share my slides huh? okay I have to go back you know okay so some slides i may be because uh, and it says when sunil called i accepted uh, suddenly forgotten and today morning i just saw then it is the uh, secretary called me and phone me i think a laparoscopy when be introduced and it was super gold bladder and uh, of course initially then slowly appendix later hernia so many of the procedure basic surgery for first five years you know but Cancer, as such, started even ninety-one itself. Colin, sir, we can't see your slides. Have you shared it? I shared it. Okay. Is it check it? No, no, we there. can't see. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Sir, Palneel, uh, sir, kindly unshare and reshare the screen, sir. Yeah, yeah. Now I uh, cancel. I will back again. Hmm. Yeah. Now we can see. You are okay. good, sir. Okay, right, right. Huh? So one will think, oh, this is thirtieth year for me laparoscopic surgery, and uh, first five years all basics, and uh, cancer started in the early nineties itself, but uh, was not accepted by many centers, mm? and slowly, slowly you look at particularly pancreatic cancer, ninety six and World Congress at Philadelphia and combined surgeons meeting, Michel Gagnier, a great surgeon, who said. it is not helpful and there is no meaning of doing a lap pancreatic resection and complication very high it takes longer time that's why he mentioned then you know that made me to come and do it the world first people then um, subsequently when i showed in 2000 at uh, atlanta and uh, it was a great surprise for the all the surgeons the pancreatic even reconstruction is shown that time but you all know how much difficult you know, people acceptance and eh? people not accepted so if you look at over this you know uh, cardiac pancreas even the beginning open surgery itself 
it is considers is it uh, now resection going to help or better to do bypass because to do resection leak rate and bleeding very high and that way even that to look at that article published in early 90s that was a trend that people talked about not only that and this also two articles you look at surgical treatment pancreatic cancer was promoted like that you know that laparoscopy russell in his lecture the great surgeon even 95 said and um, and question same question of the 90s that is still it is evolving and, and cannot you know guarantee that cure can be had but now you look at a lot of things happened so let me go slowly that some of this you know i'll uh, this thing so let's we'll share so 98 we did it and after that we prepared a invite to come to singapore also to present the master video and uh, subsequently you know, lot of times you no know, olympic surgery competition i was selected for you know, only only uh, pancreatic cancer and we have the great privilege doing the first rct in the world published in the british journal of surgery also you no know, same one presented by sindil during world congress at sao paulo and he won the best uh, you now uh, oral presentation award at that time subsequently confusion because how who can what how and what problems can manage that say first international submit world congress uh, asked me to do it so i did it at coimbatore that got published in the name of uh, you know uh, oh i will put it a play na no? okay uh, so that that way it is you know we are gone now we have guidelines we can implement anyone started now the way rajesh and everybody is doing it lot of inter young surgeons in india doing extremely well i am very happy this is the first people pancreatic people i did it in 98 and soon after his marriage he had a jaundice diagnosis made very ampler carcinoma then he came to me you know with the depressed then i did it subsequently two children and they all grown up now they are in the colleges so uh, why this laparoscopic cancer particularly look at the quality is better immune is preserved so that if you are really invasive any cancer the chances of you know Uh, cure may be improved, and even recurrence can be minimized. That is a trend that made me to do also to more in this part of this. Initial concerned this oh, no, when we moved to open to laparoscopy, eh, they thought eh, limited exposure, major vessels are close to it. You Now, if it bleeds, very difficult to manage. And at that time, initially, there was not much of you know, sophisticated energy source was not there. But later, it has come. Now we have a good energy sources. Totally, you now people can do it without uh, transfusion, uh, even hemoglobin normal. One needs to have a suturing skill of suturing. That was at that time. Everybody depended on clips and uh, gallbladder clips, gallbladder clips. You know, if a hernia doing it again, you know, takers or uh, these kind of things. People thought minimal invasive means. it is a clips and the takers were the part of this initially people never thought suturing going to so but suturing skill if it wasn't there then they can do more advanced that is one we learned at the beginning at doing it and after time going to be to longer and even open operations of ours so multiple reconstructions to be done so that's why everybody said oh, many will end so is it uh, first day you start end next day that kind of things uh, started so steep learning curve and oncologically safety was not you know proved at that time so a lot of questions but it is all gone through lot of meetings and we made it up and this is the and uh, second uh, first article 42 cases when it published um, that it, it it made it a lot of things you know going then after that you look at feasible and acceptance not inferior to open and it carries advantages then later it becomes standard of care and a lot of articles all published in this from and even the you know, number number of lymph nodes compared to open it is not inferior and similarly that uh, you know all lot of articles has come again that you know uh, tumors and malignancy duct carcinoma all you know very very much let me go that the technique and the these are all the articles published by the various and kendrick and um, kim they have done a good number of work and you know, they here yeah. now robotic is doing a chinese guy is doing extremely beyond so this is most important when you do and open or laparoscopy or robotic if one can have a free survival longer than open 
then it is uh, definitely we have to accept. And uh, if one can do a um, less morbid, the faster recovery, and without uh, the adequate cancer clearance, then we have to accept that is better than. Then achieve, that's why the longer progressions. And um, even number of lymph nodes harvest is better in minimal invasive. And our resection rate also lower minimal units because of magnification, clarity. And that too, if now we have a 3D vision in laparoscope, 4K laparoscope, and robotic, if you go 3D vision, it gives an enhanced view of this field. And so clearance can be done much better. So it is definitely superior than open. And not only that, and uh, now we have ICP, we can detect the tissue spread at the end of the resection. If any remaining tissues or nodal, if it is there, one can do it, you know, clearance, that part. That's why now, and societies have discussed making it. So when this benefit is there, so that means we have to promote. So how to do and what are the guidelines? Subsequently now, and we had uh, three international meetings, one in America, last couple of months back in Tokyo, and uh, Asian Japanese society did a consensus meeting, Part of I'm also part of that. And now they made it each step what to do, eh? everything. Now, hereafter, there is no question of only the learning problem. One has to learn and doing it. That way, look at them. Eh? And the standardization is most important. That's what I mentioned now. And to the, everybody thought, no, open, open, better, you can open and see. That's why through 13, what we made, same screen, one screen open, one screen lab. Which, uh, uh, Marcus Buechler, we all know, great surgeon, Lord, you know, maximum work he has done in open. He did open, I was laparoscopic at the end of the live demonstration. He himself said, technology is helping much more, magnification, everything. I do agree that laparoscopy is better. So, subsequently, a minimal in pancreatic uh, world congress held and postgraduate course held at Seoul, Korea, where I was supposed to be chairman of that meeting. Subsequently, we did the first RCT and here consensus. So this last consensus is a standardization technique and every surgeon has to go through this. Then finally that, you know, he can make up mind and doing it. Okay. So this is a, a trial now published um, in BJS. Ours is the first one. Subsequently, Spain, you know, the article has come um, in the same RCT in favor of laparoscopy. The third RCT has come then uh, from uh, Netherlands. It's not RCT done. It was started and half of it was stopped at Belgium because of complications. Because unfortunately, the surgeons who were not adequate experience in laparoscopy, they started and finally they were asked to stop. So that uh, RCT, we cannot take it. But still people thinking, they published, no? They, they used to call it. They will look at parietic lymph node sampling one to do, one can do very well in laparoscope robotic before going for a whipple or that way it is better. And uh, so a lot of uh, artery first approach has been described and uh, vessels reconstruction all done. Everything is much better in laparoscope than on. I will maybe show you a small video clippings. So even advanced portal vein infiltration by resection, it carries a very good result compared to without increasing morbidity. Yes. That is can be done in laparoscopy as well, robotic. If uh, one fellow has got robotic, he can do reconstruction well. If it is not there, no problem. Because take a camera system also laparoscopy is very good. You know, can. This is what I was mentioning, ICG. And we can have a very nice uh, identification of tissues so that one can be sure at the end of the procedure RO. If it is extended uh, whipple, you want to do something poor pancreatic resection, you can do it. If you want to do clearance of node, and can do. even uh, I think I will note if it is positive, then you can take it up. That is all feasible now. And this is international summit at Coimbatore. We held it and we published in uh, surgical oncology as a Coimbatore guidelines. Eh? So, uh, so this is the name that's where and Japanese surgeon put it the title as the Coimbatore guidelines. I'm so happy. And this is the you know we made how to make it, no? make it better in minimal invasive. So proper indication in the beginning, resection technique, reconstruction. So everything is very important to proceed, just like you know, otherwise making. These are the guidelines we brought in in the name of uh, Tipti. And see, all the all complete available, no? what size in the beginning one can choose, what location of the tumor, how to make it up, 
how to identify so that kind of guidelines uh, there I, I i did not to go to because it will take time but everything including uh, patient's factor and instrumentation factor and the technique and uh, even everything has been described in this article and published surgical oncology yeah? and any juniors wanted to go through they can go through this technique and uh, learning curve also don't quote the beginning time or oh, operative time longer longer even no open it is longer even some surgeon taking 7 8 hours and do open up so but still today and uh, we also life surgery is many conferences we all have shown but operative time is not that much it is uh, significantly reduced after uh, 20 to 30 cases so benchmark initially when i started pancreatic i know that less than 5% of the tumor resectable and 5% of people live there was 90s now and if we can perform our resection the thyroid survival is 80% that means if something is uh, uh, very much you know impressive that way one has to look at that and uh, instead of talking about the difficulties all this is step by step description for people which i in the video will be showing it and um, these are the certain of the techniques my own descriptions i will be showing in video and uh, if you want to enhance the clarity you, that will make it sure compared to open higher uh, resection rate by clearance these are things i describe 10 steps wide exposure it is not that limited exposure the wide exposure one can do artery first approach any type of artery approach can do it here as well like open and uh, controlling the ipd and vda beginning reduces bleeding and mesa pancreatic excision can be done uncinate excision from the sma very nicely can be done and there are technical descriptions and uh, here also we described uh, hanging maneuver our own uh, this one and uh, margin negative one can do a parapodi ultrasound or at the end of resection do a biopsy and go like you know we described this if you do perfectly this 10 steps there is no question to open or laparoscope or robotic so minimal invasive the laparoscope robotic is the way to do it so and i will go through so step by step no being here these are the ports we placed it for uh, uh, laparoscopic surgery camera ports generally when it is beginning you all thinking umbilical is there any surgery gall bladder otherwise go later we learned camera port neither can be anywhere in the abdomen but only thing away from the diseased area to operate so gall and, um, and uh, here will be head of pancreas and this work so camera here keep it and sinate excision can be done well here is a 12 mm we can put a stapler clip application you can use right hand working trocar this left hand working trocar these are the two trocars initial or dissection of surgeon standing left side one can do it eh, but most of the pr procedure i will do between the legs and this has a note the trocars these are the simple techniques that describe for the liver retraction i will show you it here so these are the positions you know comfortably one can do it and uh, see this is a type of small you know one can do it uh, lifting up the falcium ligament and also gall bladder can be decompressed if it is then put a loop and that loop can be retracted by bringing through intercostals and leaving it as such no need for any instruments and otherwise it will always come come in a difficult you know? that's way very easily one can do it then you start proceeding so you can see a very nice way and uh, common bile duct dilated system are shown so now i am going a step by step somewhere description and uh, rajesh if you think time is uh, then you want to cut any time you can tell me so we gastrocolic momentum open expose the uh, head of pancreas and we go to the left side and uh, here uh second part of the duodenum will show here the second uh, releasing the additions and finally and the right uh, colon completely mobilized down then we go to the second third part exposure and this is a, a nice instrument and uh, we can use thunder bit or one can use our liga sure one can use harmony whatever energy source it is okay hmm? you can do it and see now see this is a kind of exposure is more important no? a particular flexure to be done so that we can go uh, uh, extend the coccus maneuver can be done well so that you know very easily that so next step so now i am showing a coccus maneuver so uh, releasing the second part of duodenum from posteriorly ivc you are able to appreciate here 
And initially, people thought caucus maneuver is a difficult one. That's why I used to. Even a polydoctoral system show, they will say, oh, caucus cannot be done and uh, you cannot go down exercise. That is why now look at IOTA, uh, IOTA Caval notes. We take it for sampling. This is a nice harmonic, no? harmonic scalpel. One can do very bloodless. See, now we have reached the celiac axis SMA. This is the left renal vein. And uh, we can look at any nodes here also will take it sampling frozen biopsy before proceeding it in, in fact sma and the celiac lateral clearance can be done very well as though you are sitting under the you know, tree like now it is uh, under the head of pancreas open people have to retract retract putting a head down seeing very difficult now look at everything can be done well so this is way it is gives a very nice part of it um, okay And now, see, and now we have to suppose in case if it is a SMB is partly null assessment resectability, one can work at the inferior border of the neck and look at the SMB and the portal vein and the uh, gastrocolic trunk has been clipped and divided. And uh, this is a camera from the umbilical side down you know, and showing uh, now underneath. Instead of putting a finger and seeing, assessing it in open, here you use the dissect and see. Extended, even in C splenic vein, you can assess, so look at now, here again, the problem clearance of the common hepatic artery and the GDA control, for which if it is a periambulary, otherwise early lesion, divide the duodenum or stomach, whatever technique you want to do, classical or this, then you can go. But if it is otherwise, I will even I complete the dissection incident can be done even before division of the duodenum or stomach. So now we divide it. So you look at it gives a wider exposure. One can perform an lipid inactivity. Now look at gastroduodenal artery. These are the surgeries uh, shown long time back in a life surgery conference. Eh? And that's why the clarity is today is a little poor, but recent cases would have been better. Now, now look at the portal vein is dilated. Uh, no, no, come by dilated. We work all around. And uh, see, these are bipolar instruments we're going around. So what we do, this is endobulda clam. Put it up, then divide. Now I am dividing it, suck out the completely bile infected. And the division should be proximal cranial to the cystic duct opening. So end the bulldog clamp. So we, we don't want the infected bile and a kind of spoiling the dissecting area in pain. No, no. And the periamplate always put a loop like this. The bile also should not come there. And so now look at it. So, so it gives so, so much area one can work well. So now the portal vein, and we see uh, this is a portal vein. This is a common hepatic artery, and uh, we go clearly the and all the nodes between the uh, portal vein and the celiac axis, and uh, there's. So, so clearance, and they say ancinate. And again, this is all the small technique. Open also, they will say uh, smaller ducts very difficult to identify. Same thing in laparoscope also. Initially, when we use energy sources and uh, harmonic scalpel completely seals the bile duct. Right? So, this is a problem. So, trans, uh, transpancreatic switches and upper and inferior border. This, uh, though called hemostatic, but truly it is for handling the pancreas. Huh? See, now, when we divide, see, uh, some, we know generally the, where the duct is going to be. And that level don't use energy source, just to split the pancreas. Very easily can be identified the duct. That remaining parenchyma can produce energy, but duct no energy closer to it because if it is not uh, in this one. You see now these two sharp scissors without energy source. Eh? So now you can dividing it. So now look at and uh, a DJ flexor has been mobilized and taking to the right side. And now jejunum is uh, this side, so we make it a window. And we divide that to the right of this pedicle with the stapling. And see, window, then we divide. So now I'm showing unsinate how to exercise. And this is, I have used my own dynamic traction. That's why nothing handling, but it's the same way, same way you can see under the portal, it will come to the right of this. It usually left of the portal vein posterior, but this comes to the right side. See, SMA, I'm not doing any retraction and myself. 
but already that head has been retracted, rubber band. That's why it is completely on candle. And you see, um, I'm looking for and uh, smaller vessels, we clip it and IPDA, we can uh, no, identify, put, I see, IPDA put a clip and dividing it. And uh, open, very difficult to see these tissues. Here, we have, see, this is superpancreatic vein. And uh, so we can put a capsular clip, hemolar clip and dividing it. Then it's a replaced right hepatic artery, you can see, because imaging wise, we know already. So no problem here. And uh, even the clearance, you can do it at that level, taking it out. See, look at, and uh, this is. So anomalous vessels or replaced vessels is there in minimal invasion. Now, after clearance, you see IOTA, SMB, and uh, IVC, renal vein, and uh, portal vein. So this is where it is, you know. So a reconstruction again, this is a rubber band technique I will show. I attach a rubber band on upper neck and here also uh, and uh, inferior. And this rubber band will be taken to the lateral wall and it will continuously, constantly give a traction. Uh, see, that is the way it is. So you can work in front and behind and no, uh, need not worry. The reconstruction again, and you can look at this is where, you know, See, uh, to, to, through and through the pancreas, posterior surface, seromuscular, back again from posterior to anterior, and uh, generally make it two switches, cranial to the duct, two down, and uh, duct to mucosa, and uh, interrupted switches, generally it's a standard, but now we do continuous, and uh, that's why I don't see any leaks nowadays. Now look at the duct, eh? you can, I think this also is shown in uh, life surgery. Now look at Japanese and some surgeons and Chinese take a stitch in posterior, they don't want to slip. But generally, we need only for a few days. Okay, so similarly, two switches down and finally we finished up. Some hepatic ducts you can do into side, you know, very it is one can use vicarial or PDS, but I preference is always 40 PDS. Huh? Now, then during a jejunostomy or uh, uh, gastro jejunostomy, the surgeon's preference said it's both are standard technique, one can do it. Now, 3 V lock, I just showed the 3 0 V lock, and this also can be done very well in bowel. Now, accepted now. Hmm? Okay. So, I will go pass on some of the slides. Huh? It is okay now. See, this is again robotic, also minimal invasive only. Same exact technique, I don't change it. Robotic laparoscopy, even open the technique is the same, only approach it differs, you know, there. And then um, I, I will show later. No? So, if you do robotic, is there any advantage? Yes, it is got a full D, it will restrict like, in a hand, in a wrist like a movement, enhanced dexterity. Tremor filtering is not there. That is one advantage. Even you do a longer surgery, particularly when you come for reconstruction, most of surgeons fatigue at that time. So again, ergonomically is very good and eh, supports. And uh, you know, this is already shown. I'll I'll show. Uh, I think you know. I will show later. I think same technique, you know, I don't take. So the 3D vision, magnification, enhanced skill. This is where it comes more important. Eh? And if it is there, I will show external caucus and robotic can be. So as a surgery improves the performance of surgeons, enhanced surgical skill, IT information, all the whatever investigations, whatever you do online, real time, one can do it. Mentoring EC. So that's why laparoscopy robotic, it is uh, compared to open. It much more. There, of course, bleeds of open surgeon can put a pad control it here. It's not there. But uh, this is technology making it. Robotic, you see, look at one finger is equal to one hand, like you know, double, and it makes it totally multiple magnet enhanced performance by this technology. And uh, so as a but robotic conventional laparoscope assist, a lot of articles came, but till now the results outcome is same. Say so if one is not having a robot, need not worry about continue to do laparoscope and results is time being is better. Some surgeons claim it will short stay or not, and easy to reconstruct. That is the only thing it is here. If a duct be pancreas duct is not dilated, soft pancreas, 
I may recommend a robotic as a first choice. Rest of the places, size and choice, you know, one can do it. And um, oncological outcomes, and it is also assessed and laparoscopic. And I think and that study is you now. So no difference between a laparoscope and robotic time being. Post-operative variables the same. Intraoperative variables is also the same, including blood loss, everything. And um, it is a pancreatic impulse uh, uh, is always consists of dismal prognosis, you know, oncological. That's why very important is one has to do without uh, compromising the quality. Then it is fine. No? Technological assistance is very important. And uh, initially, yes, we did not have that instrumentation and energy sources. Now we have everything. So that way the benefits of minimal invasive and uh, without opening abdomen, without giving a transfusion, it is uh, um, immune preservation, preservation is, helps us to have a more success rate. And long survival, so you look at and uh, less trauma, sharper dissection, uh, reduced pulmonary complications because of absence of abdominal incision and blood transfusion rarely we give it at all normally. And uh, adjunct therapy immediately or can submit. If it is peripheral nodules, need not proceed surgery, put it chemotherapy, then take up surgery later. Now we have got a very good chemo system and uh, chemotherapy is downstage and get it surgery also. So this is very important part and these are a lot of articles has been published. So decreased blood loss, short hospital stay, these are all things one uh, approved. And you also you know, less pain, shorter. again, again, the article shown advantages for minimal invasive. So ICG, again, I already told two things. One is cancer cell spread we can assess and IPDA, replace hepatic artery, one can very well assess. And uh, in fact, uh, without uh, careful dissection, because magnification, one can do well. So, see, these are things, technical feasibility, and uh, our, we have developed our own dynamic traction, first cardinal vein, a lot of techniques have been described by many authors and gone make it up. So, technical feasibility is again shown. And future, and people operation, if you ask me, is it going to be open, laparoscope, robotic? I will definitely say minimal invasive. Why? If we have a robot, if a patient is affordable, a skin to have, we can do it. Otherwise, laparoscopy we can do it, give the benefits and minimal invasive. But in future, and all surgeons must be trained well to do minimal invasive. There is no point now, easy to do it, surgery, fastest you can do it, and comfortable. No, patients say, if a surgeon can put a more effect, learn, even difficult, learn the best, and do the better. So these are the things, you know, why technology, it is augmented reality. Artificial intelligence already is coming into picture. Now single port surgery, robotic single port surgery is is very well. And uh, so surgeons capability increases, surgeons have a limited power. You cannot enhance power, but if you make it robotic instruments, your power is enhanced. So but there are a lot of newer refined instruments are coming. And future, Japanese surgeons have made it uh, next five years. They want to connect all the OTs in all the islands as a single OT. Why no? They can guide. They can perform surgery sitting at Tokyo, can operate in Sapporo. They can operate anywhere. So on interlinking, that kind of remote surgery feasible only in robotic surgery. That way, I think, and uh, when India can afford a cheaper technology, easy way, and we should make it up. Hmm? So this is where the artificial intelligence also can make it a different. So I thank, uh, thank you. If you ask me a question, is it, uh, is it conquered? Yes. But is it not full? Other way also. Why no? In limited surgeons can do. How can you say conquered? Majority of surgery in India and in the world, it is being done by open. So that until unless more than 50% of the surgery is done by minimal nursing, I so we cannot call conquer. Just because few surgeons are doing it and doing well, does not mean it is. So technically, technologically, it is conquered. But as a patient reach point, it will take time. Till that time, we are still conquering, you know, fighting. We have to make every surgeon trained. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you, Sonil Puppet. And... Uh, Anything. I think Rajesh uh, may have his own questions now. I will be happy to share my views <laughs> that day. Sir, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much for once again a very, very inspiring lecture. I am sure no surgeon in the world can ever get bored of listening to you and watching your techniques. The appetite always goes on increasing when we watch. 
<laughs> and uh, so uh, let me set the ball rolling we meanwhile we might actually get some questions on the chat yeah. uh you have answered very many questions already but it is important for the audience to have a word from you regarding what bothers the audience so and in your lecture you mentioned the adequate experience should be there before a surgeon ventures into laparoscopic pancreatic surgery what do you think uh, should what is an adequate experience for a pancreatic surgeon when he should start venturing into laparoscopic care well pancreatic surgeon always particularly cancer if they do they should have a good open experience adequate open experience very important before going for laparoscopy and that is one thing one is reason is and same thing you know radicality has to be com- complete safety of oncology as we can second thing and uh, by chance if he needs to have maybe because of complication because uh, not able to proceed he can do open and get it done and for that sake he can uh, call somebody in a different city come back take over the case one second thing and uh, this already dismal prognosis and the complications still high ductly can uh, bleeding rate more not properly done that's why one should have experience that means if you ask me now okay so how many number of cases one has to do become experience then individual and how often he gets a case suppose if you say 30 cases in over 5 years it is not correct and 30 cases in a 6 months or 1 year it makes a difference so that's why it, it we cannot documentally say okay okay 30 cases you can even some people 100 cases do it or they cannot do it there are surgeon even beginning 5 to 10 because open experience so much and who has got laparoscopy experience other surgeries so lapros experience other surgeries plus open put together he becomes expert so one need not have a lap- laparoscopic pancreatic surgery laparoscopic everything in pancreas alone and in india we rajesh every one of us we do a you know spectrum procedures not like a taiwan or a korea japan they do focused organ for them they difficult for them they say experience their experience is different our experience you know straight away first case i could do it even in fact after two cases when i presented my video in japan those people didn't believe then they because seeing the video duct and asthma they said no no you should have done lord series how can do in two cases you can show such a video na there's why two cases they told i said two only <laughs> didn't believe so that is a experience is individualized na no? depending on the Definitely. Yeah. In fact, one of the uh, you know prognostic markers, as we all understand, all major complicated procedures or you can say major complex procedures, uh, there is a volume outcome relationship. So we also know that if pancreatic resection is there or a liver resection is there, if it is done in a high volume center or a, with a high volume surgeon, the outcome is definitely better. This stands proven with the literature also. now one of the limitations for the pancreatic surgeons is if they are high volume pancreatic centers or pancreatic surgeons they are all doing open and they feel that if they venture into laparoscopic surgery then probably their outcomes might get compromised so and i i also personally feel that this more of more of a i i would say a mental block how should a unit uh, overcome that mental block and i i would particularly point my question towards says there are so many good cancer centers uh, gastroenterology centers who are doing high volume pancreatic resections but still like if you talk about high volume or not say adequate volume uh, laparoscopic pancreatic resections even in india there are handful of centers and by that volume i would mean say more than 10 pancreatic ripples uh, laparoscopically uh, i i am not able to count at least more than maybe just about 3 4 centers in india so what's your advice to these centers who are doing good high volume pancreatic resections with open and they are still hesitant to get into laparoscopic what should they do and what will be the incentive for them to get into laparoscopic yeah two things mental block just because doing high volume they experience in death and the mental block they no confident right? they moving on that is the reason they people don't start and they were starting it now on need not do everything every time skin to skin by volume center they can do resection and reconstruction do mid midline open doing it but step by step they can learn then if they have enough experience they can do it so that's why i brought the guidelines what we call coimbatore guidelines in the surgery oncology step by step how to proceed 
what type of tumor initially you can choose now of course we are all of us doing any indication for a same open or laparoscope no different but in the beginner small tumor less than 3 cm periambular tumors better tumor in the head away from the vessels and uh, dilated duct systems a dilated portal vein and this uh, come well done and uh, thin patients and uh, and uh, not rigid or obese like this initially they have to choose and they should determine to move all the centers high volume centers they are the people blocking even the surgeon doing it but of course now changing they can <laughs> in fact i if i am openly telling you know i was punished because i was doing lab people one year they did not give me dnb course and if i i don't know open they may say okay right i am not training uh, open people so palneval is not allowed to do dnb fine but i can do excellent way in open i am doing it and that is the way the people on here so this is a mental block of the high volume center surgeons thinking they are good job but they are not doing the good for the patient benefit they are not doing now of course mindset change changing it but still a lot of people has to push we will do it to that okay so uh, i think we are already running short of time because we yeah. have another lecture one last question to you yes. uh, do you think carcinoma head of pancreas qualifies equally well for laparoscopic resection as do periambulary tumors head of pancreas yeah pancreatic cancer yes any, any, any tumor even okay. including portal vein resection laparoscopy okay. is the way to do it then open right yeah, it is so, thank you so much sir Sajan's experience. That's all it means. Huh? Okay. Nice. Nice. Right. Thank you very much. Thank right. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Thanks sir. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Everybody is huh? nice. So you, I'll be listening it anyway. And thank you. <laughs> you can quote the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Dr. Palnivel, for a wonderful lecture. And uh, so many times you and Rajesh discussed that it is mental block and nothing else. <laughs> and you put it step by step so nicely that one more thing which you clarified that. It is the patient's right to get the best, and it is the surgeon's desire to give the best. So, as Rajesh asked, how to implement this laparoscopic pancreatic duodenectomy in uh, teaching centers of pancreatic surgery? And you you answered it nicely. But I think uh, it is in the minds of the head of the department how to whether he wants to pursue it or not. and second thing is uh, in the beginning it is a very good idea to just to do the resection and then open up and maybe do the anastomosis by open technique and later on you can have a complete uh, people's operation laparoscopically my question to you dr palnevelu is uh, i put is it conquered because i know you and several others are doing for so many years across uh, the country and abroad but uh, as you put it in the end of your uh, lecture it is still not widely practiced so te- technically the operation is conquered but usage wise i think as you mentioned because every surgeon has a different experience and skill in laparoscopic surgery and in pancreatic surgery it will probably take a while to make it universally available What are your views on that? Yeah, that is true. That's why now initially 2000 when I showed video, it was something is a, uh, a surprise for. But till first 10 years till 2010, few surgeons adapted in the world one by one, and uh, even Kendrick started 2005 after seeing my video. But today he is he is the master in that works. And Chinese guy started in 2011, Liu Rong. Now he has done two almost 2,500 cases. So it is now the slowly people accepted now. Now after some time, these people if they don't start, they will be left out. So slowly that will change. So technology, technique, it is conquered. It is the superior to open. But since if, uh, many surgeons not trained it. So and that's why I said not to. So today we have to start a proper training programs. One is awareness creating uh, CME programs. Subsequently, hands-on training and mentorship, and then uh, we have should have an advanced courses. So that has to go step by step. And probably my the way people look at last five years, the way progress. Next five years it will go very well. And uh, after five years, I'm sure 
any surgeon who say open and people will ask you know i will go to surgeon who will do minimal invasive and that way that day the surgeons all will come and decide shift and it is all it is a, it is a game it is any procedure anywhere the same thing will happen okay last question dr palnevelu yeah. if a patient coming to you for surgery and affordability is not a problem what would be your first preference robotic or laparoscopic <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, my own institute uh, if i love the subject so uh, that's why robotic i'm doing and we change the same minimal invasive laparoscopic robotic same i'll do it if the patient is not affordable otherwise as a teaching center training center we do open still we do a laparoscopy majority laparoscopy because we don't lose money robotic if you go that mean one and up two lakhs less now so selectively we do it but the learning process we did it we know and uh, in fact our robotic ripple was the best one in asia selected it is fine but uh, i think uh, it is uh, cost wise for me it is okay because i love you know, corporate you go you can but government hospitals like aims and jipmer rishikesh or alger to anywhere you go robotic surgery is free of cost so surgeon is trained he can do free so it is three systems you know corporate by uh, many love robotic is too costly and uh, the institution like aims and the guy, this one is totally free and uh, government hospitals are private and the uh, general wards it all again both way available but our institute like you know we are training teaching center but not corporate so we want to do laparoscopic robotic for training purpose and developing a technique wise we do anything but we cannot call over the cost wise we cannot talk because it is left to our own passion to doing it yeah. but somewhere there is a, we are able to make it a volume and they getting it done technique can do it so in india is something is a extreme you know richest country like giving a robotic surgery totally free of cost unlike western countries where it's too costly but same time same india and the poorest of people available and so there they can access because surgeons are not trained it say it i think it will always go it time taking it will yeah i'm sure the next few years it will change that thank you very much dr panangal panangal for the excellent lecture i'll request dr kanagwell to take this program forward thank thank you thank you so much sir thank you palanu melo sir for uh, sharing your wisdom this evening in ids prime time it's always been a pleasure listening to you ladies and gentlemen now we move on to the next uh, important uh, aspect of today's program uh, the master laparoscopic liver surgeon uh, dr central nathan uh, the chairman of the gem hospital at chennai and the head of the hepatobiliary surgery at gem hospital is going to address us Before that, ladies and gentlemen, may I have the honor of uh, introducing our trustee, class president, Professor Sainadev Das Gupta, sir, to the audience here. Professor Sainadev Das Gupta, sir, has been instrumental in bringing in minimally invasive surgery to the eastern part of the country. He has started laparoscopic surgery as early as 1992 in Kolkata. After a brilliant undergraduate and postgraduate education from the Calcutta National Medical College, he has got trained at various places. He has had mentors from both national and international level. And in fact, to share with you, he has been instrumental in making India option of bringing laparoscopic instruments to reach of our surgeons. And he has been instrumental in various basic and advanced courses of laparoscopy of the IAGS. from its time of inception and then he has established and set the standards very high for these courses by creating perfect guidelines and teaching and training programs ladies and gentlemen professor sainadev das gupta has been instrumental in heading various bodies various boards various conveners and then he has been trend setting in setting the academics in order over the past one or two decades i have the honor of inviting dr sainadev das gupta sir to moderate this important second part of the program over to you sir thank you kanagavan thank you sudhil 
for inviting me to moderate this program. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. P. Sentin Nathan, who is the head of the Department of HTB Surgery, Department of Minimal Access Surgery and Liver Transplantation in Jail Hospital, Chennai. Dr. Sentin Nathan graduated from Coimbatore in 1998 and uh, did his MS in general surgery also from Coimbatore Medical College. He did his GMB also from Coimbatore and then he did his MRCS in 2005. Then he did his GMB GI surgery from Jain Hospital in Coimbatore and he got his FACS in 2011, FMAS, he is a fellow of minimal access surgeons of India and he is a fellow of the Association of Surgeons of India. He is presently divisional head of the Department of Autobiography, FNT, Autobiography, Liver Transplant and Minimal Access Surgery, Jain Hospital, Chennai. Uh, he is an expert committee member, he is a treasurer of MRC, and he is executive com committee member of ISG and also IHTBA of India. He has got numerous awards and achievements, which has a very long list, which I am not going to read out, but uh, his academic qualifications and his um, achievements are many. So at his young age, he has achieved a lot, especially in hepatitis research. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Sentin Nathan to give his talk. Dr. Sentin Nathan, please. Thank you so much, sir, for those nice introduction. It's my uh, pleasure to be here in IAGS prime time to share some of uh, my thoughts on laparoscopic liver resection. But before that, I love to thank, like to thank IAGS President Dr. Sunil Popat, Honorary Secretary Dr. Krishru Murthy, Convener Dr. Kanagavil, and all the office bearers and the Executive Committee members of the IAGS for giving me this opportunity. Really, I appreciate and thank all for uh, this opportunity once again. The task given to me is laparoscopic liver uh, resection, when, how, and uh, why. It's always a humongous, difficult task for me to talk after my mentor, Dr. Palli Velu, who has given a very good overview of laparoscopic pancreatic surgeries. Nevertheless, I'll try to do justice to my topic uh, how we do it, why we do it, and when we do it in this lecture. I'll share my screen. Good evening to one and all, once again. My topic today is laparoscopic hepatic resection. When, why, when, and how. Before I start my lecture, today I got, uh, we just have the information that what we conceive, what we perceive that it is inconquerable, that is laparoscopic recipient hepatectomy has been published today. So that's a very significant development. What was unconceivable, Till probably a few years back was now possible. And at the summit lies laparoscopic recipient hepatectomy just got published. The, uh, the case is from Korea. So really we are uh, sitting on the top of uh, what's called as a, a minimal invasive revolution with regards to the laparoscopic liver surgery. I bring greetings from Gem Hospital Chennai. I'll take each and every uh, question that is why, when, and how. I'll start with why. In fact, 
I really love the topic because that suits an, uh, the way I can present my case in a stepwise fashion. We all know laparoscopy, open surgery has got a lot of negative consequences. I'm not saying it's bad, but if you can able to avoid a large scar, thereby resulting in weakening of abdominal musculature, and even sensory changes can cause significant disfigurement because liver is situated in right upper quadrant, either a big, a generous midline incision or a rooftop incision or some of the fancy incisions like the Makuji incisions or inverted L-shaped incisions. This, all these incisions are liberal. It involves um, uh, lengthier incisions so that this disfigurement is, uh, cannot be avoided. But laparoscopy brings in potential advantages like faster recovery, less post-operative pain, less blood loss, and shorter hospital stay. These are very well uh, uh, found in the literature even a decade back. What I'm going to convince you is, one, the safety. People feel that laparoscopic liver resections are unsafe. No, it's not. On the contrary, it's very safe with equal three and five year survival rates. Not only that, about 80% of our liver resections are, for, are in the background of cirrhosis. Even in cirrhosis, the meta-analysis have shown that laparoscopy is safe and probably it favors, I mean, the resection by laparoscopy is favored because we no need to cut open the entire abdomen. Post-operative complications, own related problems, as better management of ascites can be done with laparoscopic liver resections. Coming to the obesity, even in high BMI patients, laparoscopy offers potential advantages and we have uh, reasons, we have evidence for that one also. I would say it's a, it has got a great benefit both in cirrhotics as well as in obese patients for the obvious reasons which I mentioned earlier. And again, uh, more than 80% of the liver resections are done for malignant lesions. And when we compare those uh, parameters, including the survival outcomes, disease-free survival and the overall survival, both are equal with regards to laparoscopic and open. So no need to fear about the inferior work being done in laparoscopy. Margins are okay, margins are clear. Uh, we can able to uh, additionally point of uh, figure out the lesions. So even in malignancy, laparoscopy has got a lot of advantages. So this is about why I can say in nut, uh, nutshell, oncologically sound, post-operative benefits, immediate post-operative benefits are there. Uh, and also it negate the negative consequences of a large laparotomy. Even it's, it has got a lot of advantages in cirrhotics and in high BMI patients. Coming to the next pertinent question, when? When we should be doing laparoscopic liver surgeries? Can we do after starting after a lab program or can we do after undergoing some basic training? No, it's not. It's a long winding road. If you look at our journey in lap liver resections, it's not made in a day. We started way back in 1990s with some non-anatomical or wedge resections. Then we learned how to do a segmentectomy, especially the peripheral segment, segment two, three, and six. Then we go to the bisegmentectomy, like the left lateral segmentectomy. Then we graduated to do a major hepatectomies like the right and the left. The left is uh, simpler compared to the right, though it's not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's still difficult, but left is uh, doable. Right has additional uh, difficulties. Then a major hepatectomies against the cirrhotic background. Again, uh, we need to put all our efforts in doing that. And finally, because of all our efforts, culminated in doing laparoscopic donor hepatectomy uh, three years back. It's not the road, the journey is long and winding road. It's not made in a single day. And that is possible with 
our f concerted effort in non resectional surgeries to start with we started with laparoscopic hydatid surgeries then ventured into major hepatectomies transplant unit was set up later initially again in transplant as far as the donor hepatectomies we never ventured directly we ventured into hybrid approaches initial mobilization by laparoscopy parenchymal transection by open and then we graduate and then uh, we know how to do the lap pure laparoscopic donor hepatectomy this is how we have to uh, climb it's like climbing a mount everest first we have to acclimatize first we have to have the gadgets then we need to uh, uh, do all the base camp we have to go to the base camp and then the summit likewise we need to have a lot of steps to progress to achieve pinnacle in laparoscopic liver surgery i can show this is uh, in 2006 and 2014 our uh, results on laparoscopic hydatid surgery though it's a non resectional predominant procedure, procedure still about 10 percentage of those hydatid surgery at the time required resection so that is how we got to know how we can do laparoscopy for uh, tumors then uh, after a uh, high decade and a half of experience with laparoscopic uh, surgery we published our first of uh, the series of laparoscopic major hepatectomies both only right and left were included 56 patients with excellent post operative outcomes we also did uh, our uh, background check with the laparoscopic radical cholecystectomy because that also involves removal of two segments segments 4b and 5 so that what's important is we should familiarize we should able to train our uh, team and that is uh, that has culminated in uh, being invited for the asia pacific expert committee on laparoscopic liver resections this is all again i stress is made possible because of the efforts of the team concerted effort over a long term period so that we can able to develop and run a successful laparoscopic liver unit and then coming to the uh, starting of uh, the procedures we should select solid lesions predominantly in the peripheral locations perhaps we can ch choose a non cirrhotic background these are uh, to some extent will help us in get to know the finacy that for nuances associated with laparoscopic liver resections and the tumors again should not be more than 5 cm so we should choose to pluck the uh, tumors which are easy which are lying pedunculated which are uh, easy to grab then we can go for some deep rooted tumors as i told you peripheral located tumors like here can be tackled initially and then later we can go for deep tumors once we have enough confidence learn a team we can go for master class procedures like right anterior sectionectomy right posterior sectionectomy central hepatectomy caudate lobectomy and finally i would say culminate in what's the summit achieving like the mount everest which i would say donor hepatectomy perhaps now we have the recipient hepatectomy also so this is again uh, this i would say i have graduated to know how to uh, have, do the hanging maneuver before personally i went into donor hepatectomy because safety is important i should know when to uh, every time all the time throughout the procedure i should have a proper control so hanging maneuver is one such thing where i graduated later in my uh, career so that i can do a uh, donor uh, hepatectomy successfully of course that probably will need the uh, need to do it but i uh, somehow felt that i should have a proper control in the retro hepatic pre uh, on in front of the ivc so that whatever happens everything can be in our hands again this is again we can help in final uh, parenchymal transection as you can see always we have a, a real insurance a real a confidence that something is behind to protect us not to injure the ivc so i learned this as my last uh, uh, step uh, in uh, achieving uh, the laparoscopic donor protective pinnacle Uh, as a result of our effort we published our first series uh, from india 
uh, it's so it's a small now we have crossed 25 but at that time it's three uh, case uh, short case series of three patients uh, which was published uh, uh, three years back then coming to the all the more important how to do what is the technical relevance what are the technical uh, know how of how to, very important point that's why i kept it as the last section of my talk uh, one thing uh, the palivel user also stressed the need for having a proper camera trokers camera is not in the midline like in pancreas we shift the camera towards the lat la right lateral position because the porta is not in the midline it's not a midline structure it's situated well away onto the right side so that's we have to uh, understand and we have to place it accordingly the rest are all retraction and the working trokers and here i stress on one important point we need to compartmentalize the job to the other members of the team like the camera surgeon the surgeon stands between the legs the camera surgeon stands on the right side the assistant the first assistant or the first surgeon stands on the right side and then the scrub nurse can be behind every or maybe we can have one more assistant here and everyone should be given proper space proper uh, instructions to manage what all the jobs they have to do they have to retract the liver yes they have to suck the fluid yes they have to uh, retract the gallbladder or they have to give clips or they have to assist each and every member of the team should know what they are doing so that the surgery goes seamless then uh, for the, it starts with after mobilizing portal dissection this is for major epitectomy have a beautiful demarcation line go for the parenchymal transection the key aspect of laparoscopic liver resection unfortunately we don't have kelly clamp in uh, laparoscopy so we have to resort to any some sort of energy sources and we among the lots we uh, what i prefer is qsa because that brings the parenchymal transection closer to open rather than mass coagulation and just keep, keep on cutting which i don't uh, do nowadays initially i would do i was doing like uh, the habib probe cook and cut but now we just identify then we uh, do the outflow control using uh, staplers and finally the cut surface is inspected for any bleeding or by leak again uh, i love this concept of uh, symphony orchestra being played to a theater likewise liver resection is also played to perfection with uh, help push from not one but many people surrounding the uh, operation of course the surgeon is at the center no doubt about it he or she guides the procedure but others like the instruments that played at the symphony have probably equal important if not more important role why i say is multiple roles are play retraction suction instrument exchanges a proper camera work everything has to be uh, perfect it may not be uh, so well we can manage with Uh, the beginner for other procedures but not for laparoscopic liver resection the next concept i would like to uh, tell you and also follow is the excavation concept like we excavate all the ruins all the archaeological uh, ruins uh, which we uh, the asi do i mean asi means archaeological society of india do we need to excavate uh, so they excavate the liver so that all the hepatocytes are defragmented and what uh may is made out is the biliary radicals and the blood vessels which can be tackled easily other thing is bottom up approach because we look from below up not from top down so we uh, go from bottom to the towards uh, the main vessels so that uh, like an open book we should know what exactly happened at the transection plane so that any eventuality can be tackled and technology helps a lot i'll just show from now onwards i'll be playing few videos and then wind up in the interest of time uh, technology especially the icg as you can see beautiful parenchymal transection planes are well made out not by just uh, visual uh, I, i mean here again the second video when initially it was blue now we have icg indigo sign in green hemiportic clamping for both uh, don hepatectomy as well as for right and left hepatectomies hepatic artery and hepatic uh, uh, portal vein uh, is clamped as you can see the, this is the right uh, hepatic artery being clamped portal vein is already clamped and then switch on the icg mode 
you see initially it's all not so clear but the moment we uh, switch on the icg you see in a few moments you'll have a beautiful demonstration of uh, hemiportal occlusion as well as perfused liver this helps us a lot in our planning so that exactly there will not be uh, too much of wavering of uh, the par parenchymal transection plane this way or that way not only that bile duct identification leave the main bile duct even accessory this is one of the donor repetitive videos where the donor has uh, accessory bile duct very difficult unless you do you have a intraoperative cholangiogram which is cumbersome by laparoscopy and here we see, you can see but the switch a uh, click of the button we can see beautifully the presence of uh, accessory about 3 mm this is the bio, accessory bile duct a small duct though still we can able to identify and preserve and then which can be tackled later so icg and technology helps us in not only in bile duct identification but also in resection now uh, i'll show a couple of icg based videos this is this patient underwent a colo uh, uh, heavy I mean, anterior resection had a colorectal meds i did uh, segment 4 uh, resection you can see that's why it's all adherent two times this is the third resection and third resection we have segment 4 uh, again 4a multiple re resections re resections are all possible with the help of laparoscopic uh, ultrasound probe we can see diaphragm is attached we have uh, initial at the end we removed a, a chunk of uh, diaphragm diaphragmatic portion attached then we mark it and then we can uh, surface marking alone is not enough when we go in with the help of uh, surface marking and the ultrasound guidance we can go for the inflow control first that's what we are searching here this is intra parenchymal inflow control so cues are being used as i told you it's a excavation concept we need to excavate so that these small uh, uh, bile biliary radicals this is a vein outflow control can be tackled so there should not be any slogging slowly slowly we should make our way everything this is the inflow control because of the excavation concept we could able to do the inflow and then the uh, yes, uh, silk is tied around and then now you can see the once the icg is injected we can see a complete demarcation that means it's not only uh, bloodless but also oncologically safe so this is what the technology has given us we have to travel a long way by just simply marking the surface and then doing two segmental resections based on the icg so the inflow then is divided then we go uh, for the outflow and then we remove the uh, proper anatomically uh, removed segment uh, tumor uh, segments the next one is segment 2 resection again based on the anatomy uh, icg here again we can all see how a surface marking can be modified based on the icg the, the uh, triangular ligaments are divided you can see the tumor here segment 2 resection surface marking is uh, done as you can see i'll uh, later i'll see uh, tell you how a surface the tumor is here generally it's about half half segment 2 segment 3 then we proceed to the inflow control we have not div started dividing the parenchyma this is extra hepatic glusonian approach at the umbilical fissure you can see this is at the umbilical fissure we dissect and then go to the segment 2 inflow pedicle this is segment 3 and this is our segment 2 this is segment 3 now we can see uh, because of this is uh, extra hepatic glusonian approach we can able to uh, go and then identify individual segmental inflow pedicle this is you can see endomene retract and segment 2 a little bit of uh, parenchymal transection needs to be done 
with the help of endomeny retract we identify encircle the segment two pedicle and you can see how we have gone wrong this is exactly the segment two initial surface marking was modified and this is the true segment two somewhere we went more somewhere we went less and this gave us exact uh, 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 i mean segment two then we remark the surface and then we proceeded this gives a proper anatomical segmentectomy now we can see uh, on all side we can able to do a proper segmental resection once we mark then we uh, clip the inflow control uh, inflow pedicle So this is how our technology again helps us to do proper segmental resection. In the same case, I would have erred at some way more and some time, some area less, so that it may not be a true anatomical resection. But uh, this has given the true anatomical resection. As you can see, uh, rubber bands, as per Dr. Palnevelu uh, has shown, can be used to retract on both sides of the liver parenchyma, like an open book. Then we proceeded. It gives a nice traction, controlled traction, so that now we use it not only for uncinate resection but also for parenchymal transaction in liver resections. So then we proceed. Everything is in our hand. We can have a roadmap. Inflow is done. We need to do the outflow only, and that's uh, proceeding smoothly. No slogging, so that uh, uh, our heart rate uh, will not increase as we uh, progress towards the outflow control. This is what I said. Excavation concept. It, uh, it it beautifully gives all the structures, the framework of the liver nicely, so that we can tackle it. You can see this is the outflow. Outflow is clearly seen nicely, so that we do the we tackle it with a stapler, and then we remove the proper anatomy also segment two. This is at the end of uh, segment two resection. Yes, technology definitely helps. A couple of uh, videos, and then I stop my presentation. Right hepatectomy, coming to the major ones, mobilizing the liver, and then we come to the uh, right uh, portal uh, dealing. So that first we do uh, the hepatic, uh, sorry, portal vein and the hepatic artery. This is the hepatic uh, artery being looped, ligated, and divided. Then we go to the uh portal vein pringle ready we should be pringle ready there was a small bleeding uh because of the uh, i mean sorry uh the cardiac branch then uh we should be pringle ready a short uh, pringle usage can reduce the bleeding then you can see the portal vein is soft and supple it's uh encirculated with a again endomeny retractor can be used it's ligated in continuity because the space the extra hepatic space available sometimes may, may not be adequate for a clip remove the pringle then we start parenchymal transaction after surface marking again like an open book retraction on either side with the rubber band or the uh, sutures initial uh, the parenchymal transaction is by uh, harmonic shears and then for deeper parenchymal planes, we use QSA. Left hand is with a bipolar forceps, Maryland type of bipolar forceps. This is the origin of uh, the middle hepatic vein forming between the V5 and V4. We divide that, it's V5. Again, no slogging. Then we go deeper into the parenchyma. We see the uh, inflow control inflow. This is the uh, pedicle, the right anterior. And, segment, and then individually performing the segment 8 portal pedicle and segment 5 portal pedicle forming the right anterior here. So again, we are going away from the porta. So we are very safe. We, are, we could able to uh, do uh, in a very relaxed manner. So this is uh, uh, segment 5, then segment 8. And finally, we have the right posterior pedicle again away from the porta along with the, you can see cardiac lobe. So this is right, uh, right posterior. Finally, we come to the uh, portal, uh, right hepatic vein, the tumor is below. So that even tumor situated in the peri uh, hepatic areas can be tackled 
without the need to uh, slog, without the need for much of a bleeding. Staple division using white cartridge. And finally, we can see the, the IVC is uh, in our view. The IVC is here. And uh, this is the Makuchi ligament or the IVC ligament being divided. And then the tumor is removed. The final bit of uh, tissue, you can see the uh, IVC, the subraphoromatic region. So this is about through a final incision after putting it in endo bag, uh, uh, we'll just uh, remove the final, uh, I'll just again, uh, this is, I would say, uh, the pinnacle that is a laparoscopic donor apatectomy. A part of it you've already seen, mobilize the liver, mobilize it widely. And this is what I said, the hanging maneuver, the, the retrohepatic uh, fashion, so that uh, we have a lot of comfort. Then individually, we go for the hemi-portal clamping after dissecting the right portal vein and the right hepatic artery. Surface marking, then release the surface marking and start parenchymal transaction. Similar to uh, the resection, but only thing we need to identify the inflow as well as the outflow. V5, V6, what are all the um, venous uh, outflows which needs to be uh, reconstructed, they have to be preserved. In the interest of time, you can see this is clipped and divide. That's going that uh, the V5 is going to be reconstructed. Slowly, uh, we go, we'll be going to the V8. V8, this is V8, as you can see. This is the, this also will be reconstructed at the back bench. And now uh, we do what is called uh, the hanging maneuver, excluding the porta so that uh, only the parenchyma is left below is the IVC. We use generously the ICG throughout the procedure. The bile duct is divided first, as you can see. First, this is uh, the V8. Then the artery is uh, hepatic artery is uh, first is bile duct hepatic artery bile duct you can see bile duct is divided then we are ready with uh, the uh, retrieval of the graft hepatic artery is divided portal vein and finally the hepatic vein so all these uh, are uh, divided now we have one sided stapler this is the ivc ligament So we divide and then remove the craft. So this uh, is my uh, suggestion. Start with minor resections. And this is not only mine. There is a consensus. The second international uh, consensus conference on laparoscopic liver resection in Ubate. It also states that assess the difficulty preoperatively. Hybrid techniques in difficult situations, along with the cautious use of energy sources. So to conclude. I would say that as far as the laparoscopic liver resections are concerned, now the standard of care for minor hepatectomies is all its laparoscopy, no doubt about it. Major hepatectomies even in 2021 are limited to few centers for the technical difficulty involved in performing laparoscopic liver resections. Better perioperative outcomes with laparoscopy and equal long-term results with com compared to open surgeries. I can say that technical refinements, especially with the wider availability of cues and better understanding of the anatomy as well as usage of energy sources and technologies like ICG, now laparoscopic liver resections bring parenchymal dissection closer to open surgery. Thank you very much. Uh. Dr. Sainda, sir. Sir, please uh, unmute yourself. I am yourself. privileged to have the comments from uh, Professor Sainda, uh, sir. Uh, can you hear me now? Can yes, you sir. hear me now? Yes, yes sir. Well, thank you, Dr. Sainda Nathan, for an excellent presentation. You made everything look so easy. Uh, that is a uh, indication that you are such an expert. Uh, Excellent presentation. What I want to uh, know is uh, what is the acceptance of 
laparoscopic hepatic resection in india how many centers are doing it and how many people are accepted it sir if you uh, i don't know if you okay, allow me i will uh, yes. uh, i have a st- i did a study sir uh, for my uh, uhan uh, in the sense uh, uh, when i was uh, selected for the asia pacific expert committee membership uh, i presented indian experience and then this is what i have to present i did a study that's the, the only indian study that is available uh, i will just quickly present it shall i sc- uh, share my screen please please yes please, please sir yeah please do this is the presentation which i made in wuhan the epicenter of uh, corona virus <laughs> few years back <laughs> so uh, this is the indian scenario we have sent a set of questionnaire to 47 centers who are doing laparoscopy and open there were 30 responders 19 doing laparoscopy 19 do they don't uh, uh, do laparoscopy and their preferred approach is uh, total laparoscopy and indications again apatoma it's all uh, mixed uh, including the symptomatic benign or indeterminate tumors pringle they do uh, they predominant of the people they they say they use selectively the pringle maneuver parenchymal transection technique used yes about uh, 50 50 for multiple and qsa difficult areas are porta dissection transection bleeding outflow control and suprahepatic ivc control main reason for conversion to open is bleeding which is very obvious so this is uh, uh, the uh, the i mean uh, with regards to your question of what is the indian uh, experience the centers which are doing laparoscopy sir this is the uh, only unfortunately i have not published till now probably i should uh, be publishing these uh, results but yeah, i the, ask the question as well no no what i want to ask first uh, how many centers are doing the prostopic hepatic resection compared to open ones okay. most people I, are... i got your point sir it should be less than 5 percentage the penetrance of laparoscopic liver resection i would say is even lesser than pancreatic resections pancreatic resections distal pancreas they are there are a lot of people are doing ripples yes now increasing but liver there is an inherent fear of bleeding inherent fear of embolism uh, that's why uh, the i would say probably the others can uh, also uh, give their uh, answers my uh, i mean Uh, expectation is less than 5 percentage of the centers i'm talking about centers who are doing good quality hpv work they do less only less than 5 percentage venture into laparoscopic liver resection because as yeah. i understand because as i understand uh, most of the hpv surgeons look down upon uh, laparoscopic hepatic resection they actually look down upon i mean there is no evidence to it but the general concept is laparoscopy is inferior to uh, open open surgery for hepatic resections uh, that is my impression that i get uh, from other centers uh, my next question would be uh, what are the outcomes how good is the outcome because you don't have a very large study no? uh, the study what you are presenting is very limited study because the number of patients is low and uh, the open dissections open donor dissections their volumes are much higher so what do you think is the outcome now we have a good uh, randomized control trials oslo pomat is uh, the first randomized control trial that has got published and that shows that compact the uh, colorectal liver meds open versus laparoscopy that has compared uh, uh, both uh, arms reasonable it's a first randomized control trial not only that subsequent multi uh, uh, center 
as well as uh, i mean uh, multinational trials have shown that laparoscopy is at least as good as open with regards to the oncological outcomes uh, with ad 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 additional benefits of peri immediate perioperative outcomes so that's what uh, the literature wise it's all clear sir both with regards to cirrhotics as i mentioned with regards to oncological uh, it's not about few cases it's uh, the few cases is about our experience it's about uh, now we have crossed 250 uh, resections of which about uh, uh, 70 or this major river hepatectomies i would say now ours is not a great numbers but when you look at the literature we have evidence comparing about 1000 hepatectomies here 1000 hepatectomies there even uh, from the good uh, centers from us uh, published in the annals of surgery from md anderson and the other centers across i mean including mayo clinic have published nagin has published 1000 laparoscopic uh, hepatectomies without mortality that's what uh, the the uh, the literature says now if you look ask literature yes sir definitely there is a case for laparoscopic surgery uh, i think uh, what you have shown what uh, all the videos that you have shown uh, the icg at technology has made a big difference in uh, the outcome of laparoscopic hepatic resections uh, do you think that is uh, it is a paradigm shift in do you think that is a paradigm shift in outcomes because of the advances in technology especially in icg i think so so personally i think so that has improved personally my margins i can be more confident about my margins uh, so that what i previously perceived as a good anatomical resections now i have the uh, ability as well as i can confirm it on table am i doing a proper segmental resections because proper segmental resections always will have a better oncological outcomes whether it is bisegmentectomy segment monosegmentectomy uh, by leaks or less ble bleeding is uh, bleeding is less so my uh, technique has improved my confidence have, uh, has improved with advent of icg not uh, not only for one reasons but for multiple reasons including bile duct identification uh, hemiportal clamping as well as in uh, this is a negative staining generally we do a negative uh, staining where the rest of the a parenchyma illuminates and the segment which i am going to resect gives a dark one so yes i agree to a point personally uh, our results have been uh, on the rising trend so that we have not only more confidence but also on table identification is now possible sir yes i agree i agree technology definitely helping two technology one is icg the other one is qsa qsa and third one is laparoscopic ultrasound Uh, these three things uh, will help us in mapping doing a proper uh, uh, surgery by laparoscopy what do you think will be the role of robotics in hepatic resections very much, i restricted myself to a laparoscopy because the topic is laparoscopic liver surgery uh, yes robotic definitely has a role uh, because unlike other surgeries this has a fixed uh, area of working we don't need to after portal uh, dissection we just stay on the course through the entire parenchyma transection in one frame for and also when we go into the superior aspect laparoscopy flexi tip all those uh, cameras 3d laparoscopy flexi tip along with uh, the robotic place uh, gives a stable platform with which we can work a lot more comfort so i yes i probably it's a new chip of the old block robotic surgery definitely helps probably augments it may not completely replace the laparoscopic surgery but yes robotic surgery is probably the one another reason why more and more people are embracing minimal access because transition from open to robotic is easier than open to laparoscopic surgery for that matter laparoscopic to robotic unless there is a pesting uh, Uh, I mean, uh, need uh, real uh, need. 
probably people will continue laparoscopy. So the best chance for any open surgeon to learn minimal access, I would say, is robotic surgery. It will have definitely a good impact on uh, the way with which we operate in the future. Thank you, Dr. Sintilathan, because uh, we are short of time. We are almost uh, finished uh, for your excellent presentation. And I wish you all the best for more innovative surgery for laparoscopic hepatic resection and hepatic surgery, uh, hepatobiliary surgery in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for the nice words. Thank you for moderating my session, sir. Privileged. Uh, this has a question. Oh, uh, I have a comment. Excellent uh, presentation once again, Central. That was again uh, very, very interesting. Lots of good videos. And I would just like to support and reiterate your views uh, for the audience that laparoscopic liver resection is the way to go. I've been to centers in China wherein they do 40 liver resections in one department in one week. And I've seen about almost six to eight per day very swiftly by almost every member of the department. And I very strongly feel having ventured into one, uh, we are into laparoscopic liver surgery for the last four years. We have a decent experience and I would urge you to include our center also when you try to collect the data and publish it. Uh, I strongly feel that laparoscopic liver resection is probably much more standardized and has much better results in terms of outcome and ease of technique. Uh, when you compare it to laparoscopic pancreatic surgery. Perhaps routine pancreatic laparoscopic surgery is probably slightly more challenging than routine uh, laparoscopic surgery once the learning curve is crossed. And I think that's the future for liver surgeons. Yes, well said, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Santil, for excellent lecture and excellent videos. Uh, uh, Rajesh had a question which he posted in the chat box. Rajesh, would you, would you want to ask it? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know your preference for the timing of ICG injection as per the intended use. So when do you inject ICG? Uh, in what scenario? What are you trying to look at? And what is the timing of injection? Yeah, if it's a, a very good question, sir. If it's for uh, vascular reasons like hemiportal clamping, uh, segmental resections, it has to be immediate, instant. You clamp the inflow or, uh, and then you give it, then it uh, gives a nice uh, a demarcation. It has to be instant, like an arteriogram, like a, a contrast enhanced CT. It, uh, you do all the things, all the clamping, then give ICG. It's, it's very uh, uh, simple to understand. But if it were to for a, uh, to for a biliary anatomy, we have to give full two hours before the procedure so that everything then will con will be concentrated on to the bile duct. Otherwise, what happens, there will be smudging of the images because the liver filters the ICG from the blood through the hepatocytes and then it just uh, filters into the bile. Immediately, the blood vessels, the liver parenchyma as well as the bile, duct, everything will be in one uh, image there will not be much of a difference the, like DSA later two hours three hours because we have seen in the transplant setting at the beginning of the surgery we give four hours later that shows a nice beautiful anatomy so for biliary purposes at least two hours before for vascular purposes instant and for some uh, the third reason is to identify, to pick up additional liver lesions we yes. need to give a few days before the um, surgery is done. So these are the three indications for which different differential timings are followed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. For um, lecture, and I'm sure we can go on. Uh, we can go on discussing for another few hours regarding laparoscopic hepatic resection, but uh, you very well summed up how one should start the laparoscopic liver resection and how one can proceed. Uh, I had one question that I think you were doing uh, laparoscopic liver resection before even the advent of ICG. <coughs> so I think at that time you were uh, guided by a laparoscopic ultrasound or you had any other tricks? Yes, sir. If it is not an inflow like uh, extra hepatic or uh, glizonian, or two things, anatomical landmarks. See, in segment uh, two and three or left lateral, falciform 
is very obvious we cannot go wrong where we go wrong is on the other side where we don't have a clear anatomical demarcation there we use laparoscopic ultrasound no doubt we use it, uh, uh, the marking say for example segment 4b and 5 uh, we uh, still do by uh, laparoscopic ultrasound uh, between uh, the segment 5 and 6 sometimes it can go wrong now retrospectively when i uh, just uh, after usage of icg now i'm going back and thinking whether all my previous it's not the case with uh, to start it's not the case with hemi liver resections like hemi or right hepatectomy or left hepatectomy for segmental based seg uh, minor resections like by segmentectomy by segmentectomy icg comes probably all my previous i have to i don't have the answer but may or may not be correct all the previous by segmentectomies and the segmentectomies now i can clearly map it yes for that reason uh, i am using icg to a great extent yeah thanks uh, another question is uh, when you moved from open liver resection to laparoscopic liver resection has it uh, increased your resectability that previously you may not uh, you were not uh, resecting some of the liver lesions which you are now able to resect because of uh, the gadgets you have now available with the help of laparoscopy no sir uh, this i would uh, like to if it is picking up additional lesions yes laparoscopy we have a laparoscopic probes of course we have open probes also leaving that aside this is one area where if i if i cannot do by laparoscopy i can do by open that is my answer because large lesions so i am very passionate about laparoscopy no doubt but i at the same time i cannot vouch i can do laparoscopy for all tumors tumors which are very large tumors sitting very close to the hilum tumors which are very sitting very close to the ivc so all these uh, tumors uh, i mean again central hepatectomies though i say literature wise central hepatectomies can be doable but still lot of uh, Uh, limitations are there lap if not for some reasons open for large tumors that's my answer yeah thank you santil thank you so much i'll leave it to dr kanagwell to take this uh, program to its conclusion thank you thank you thank sir. you uh, president uh, and please sir one last question to you before we close the session uh, do you think probably like how gallbladder has been totally taken over by laparoscopy and dental access uh, do you think probably the next generation younger surgeons with more advent of gadgets and uh, assistance every section will see its time towards laparoscopic learning or you still feel a definite open experience is mandatory before taking up laparoscopic care no doubt this is a very valid point uh, closing remarks lap open surgical experience is very very valid uh without having proper open experience this is i would say coming together of the both of the worlds best of the both worlds a very good laparoscopic skills with a very good background of working in a open surgical setup because when laparoscopy is not working we have to fall back on open surgery at the time i cannot say or oh, call somebody to open and then manage no it cannot be done we have to manage whether in open or laparoscopic surgery and ultimately when everything else fail probably we have to fall back on open so open surgical experience is not, cannot be compromised that is a basic minimum for us to venture into laparoscopic surgery and to a point laparoscopic cannot replace completely the open resections in this kind of major uh, procedures what we try to aim is to increase the proportionate the proportion of the laparoscopic surgeries from i would say now from 5 percentage to probably a 50 60 percentage that's it it can never replace uh, open surgery at least in our lifetime that's what i feel thank you for very pragmatic uh, doctor sentel sir and uh, may I now have the honor of uh, thanking sandar sir for uh, excellent moderation of this session thank you sentel sir for sharing your wisdom this evening Uh, with the permission of the president can i invite uh, peeshwar sir our secretary to propose the vote of thanks thank you thank you mr president 
Dr. Kanagavel for bringing conceptual writing and bringing a wonderful program today for the prime time. I'm sure all the viewers of Doc Plus would agree they had a really absorbing two hours of academic treat. I think what a sight to witness. Uh, uh, two mice, I would say, in their own right, in the world experts in uh, liver and pancreas, giving the pearls of wisdom. I think great presentation, excellent video quality, and uh, we are all very proud and uh, to present our words of appreciation and appreciation certificates both to Professor Palnivelu and my dear friend Sentil Nathan for a wonderful presentation. We thank both our uh, uh, past president that signed the and also the DC member and the cell CUP president uh, Dr. Rajesh Bojwani for moderating the session, keeping the time up. And uh, thank you, sir. And it's been always a motivating figure. Uh, like a uh, leading from the friend the whole indian scenery is waiting to know more from you and also your team in jump hospital to central northern all the people doing a wonderful job and uh, as as office secretary i have a couple of pleasant duty news to share with all of our 8000 odd members across the country as you all know this week we are very academically vibrant with yet another program happening on 4th September. Please watch the time 5 p.m. onwards on ventral hernia with the lots of national international figures are joining for a master class on ventral hernia. And as you believe it or not, I think we need to take it the COVID is fading. It's a time for all of us to meet on site I think we had enough of online. So the first program we are going to meet in Delhi on 10th to 12th September. Thanks to uh, our Randi Badwan, our EC member from the North Zone. He is hosting the Pulse Upper GI. And we are going to have a wonderful program. Followed by Kanavel himself along with his colleague Balaji Singh is going to invite a double bonanza of FAGS and EFAGS, the flagship programs of IAGS happening. I'm sure all of us know the hospitality of Chennai and I'm sure with the people from uh, Sendil and all our, uh, I think Praveen, all are going to be there along with everyone to make it really an academic treat. So we welcome wholeheartedly all the members to join because here there is a one unique thing is happening because even though we are starting the first on-site program, there are quite a lot of on-site, I mean online Candidates are awaiting their assessment. So they're all quite welcome. And uh, please talk to or at least write to Dr. Kanagavel so that you will be accommodated on, uh, note the date, 25th and 27th. That is a day two and day three for one and a half uh, I mean, days with no additional registration fee. And your assessment will be done and you will be offered the hands on experience in whatever you want, whether it's an endoscopy or a simulation in the laparoscopy setting. So that's a news I want to share. And also there are more news are going to come. I think we are going to have false colorectal, as I said, Praveen is going to host in Jem Hospital, Chennai. And uh, then you, we need to travel all the way to the uh, south end of our uh, country, uh, Kanyakumari, to witness that Siva hosting false hernia. Lot more to see from our friend. I am sure when we meet next year, beginning that is in February 10th to 13th in Rajamundri, I am sure we are going to have a wonderful on site congress. As we speak this weekend, we are going there to make sure all the arrangements are done in a great way. So, ladies and gentlemen, you all know we have been active in the last couple of years in a various front seat COVID task force, online fellowship, or now the on site fellowship. Equally with the Dr. Ramesh Agrawala and his team working day and night to get the IHS research committee vibrant with a first large prospective study on inguinal hernia. People interested to join here as a collaborator, please talk to Tarun Mitchell or Dr. Ramesh Agrawala or myself to join the study. And also, we'll be sending a, a notification regarding applying for the best. JMA's journal article or researcher and also PG thesis award also and I am sure people will be interested to apply and uh, we are all making all the initial efforts to make our association also with the collective efforts from our colleagues to make an India in the world map in the World Congress 2024 in Calcutta. So with all these things coming and we will keep you all connected with YouTube channel today's program. If people missed it by any chance, it's a wonderful two delightful lectures. You can watch it in the IAG's YouTube ch channel for several times. And also it was telecast today also in the Facebook page. 
and as soon uh, i think it's a matter of days we are going to have the mobile app also ready so a lot of good news to share until we see you again in the prime time with yet another beautiful session thank you dr prasas for a very excellent transmission today and thank you president thank you kanagavel for yet another program and we thank the both the speakers for having stayed late today with a busy schedule and thank the moderator bye bye good night jai hind thank you thank you santhil thank you everybody thank you sir thank you so much thank you everyone thank you doc flex thank you president thank you secretary sir thank you sainda sir alnevel sir thank you santhil sir good night thank sir, you everyone thank you. from the doc flex so rajesh sir good night sir bye bye everyone